If you take a hologram of a vibrating object, you can actually see the vibrations. Um, so there we've got, if you like, the one-dimensional vibration of the string, the fundamental of the string. Um, the guitar has got its own fundamental, where the whole body moves up and down, kind of like a trampoline. Uh, and if you take a hologram, but that, that's an exaggerated motion, by the way. You, you wouldn't try and play something like that. Uh, if you take a hologram of that, you can see something like this. This is kind of a, a contour map of vibration. Uh, you'll notice here, the ends of the strings, the bridge, are very close to the point of greatest vibration. That means that the strings find it very easy to drive this body pattern, okay? Um, there's the one-dimensional first harmonic uh, of the string. The equivalent of the guitar looks more like that. Two, again, two regions of vibration. Uh, but in this case, you notice the ends of the strings are right next to a point which doesn't vibrate at all. Now that means it's kind of like, it's like trying to open a door by pushing on the hinges. Uh, you're not going to get very far. The strings find it very difficult to drive this pattern of vibration, to deliver it, the strings' frequencies to our ears using this pattern of vibration. Uh, and there's all kinds of other different uh, patterns of vibration, body modes. And if we understood how all of those string harmonics coupled to each of these body patterns, uh, we'd have a lot more uh, control over the instrument, how, uh, over how we make and build an instrument, um, which would allow us to uh, build instruments which musicians preferred. Uh, notice I'm not saying build better instruments, because that's a completely subjective uh, viewpoint, and we've always got to be careful uh, in musical engineering what's objective and what's subjective. We can ask a musician what he, he or she would prefer and try and deliver that, uh, but we can't say what's objectively good. That's very difficult to do. Uh, we could also start using different materials. Um, and the whole point of me here today is, is the Cool Acoustics team under Eddie here at um, Loughborough University have started using uh, thermoplastics. Uh, certain types of plastics that you can press into a certain shape uh, and it's, it's a very light plastic and a very stiff plastic. So again, it's got good stiffness to mass ratio, good stiffness properties uh, in order to build an instrument from. Uh, what the volume of air does is it gives you an extra bass resonance. Okay? It's kind of like why you, your loudspeakers aren't just in a little plate, they're in a box. Uh, the bass reflex enclosure gives you a nice bass resonance um, which couples with the top plate as well. Um, and the size, of the, the size of the volume, the size of the hole, uh, all of that um, uh, makes a difference to the sound, makes a difference to the size of the, the placement and the size of that bass resonance. Um, it doesn't really matter uh, the placement of the hole, actually. In fact, a lot of guitars, again, the ovations, they, they put holes kind of either round here or maybe down the side or on the back. It doesn't really matter where the hole is placed so long as it allows the air to breathe in and out of the guitar. Um, in fact, uh, some people suggest that you want to have it away from the plate because it might start affecting the stiffness of the plate. I notice uh, in this one that he's got another um, strut along here which keeps it nice and stiff even though the hole's there. So, I mean, again, it's, it's, another, it's another critical factor that you've got to play around with uh, in order to get yourself a nice guitar. guitar we don't want the strings energy to leak away to the body this is a solid bit of wood we want the, all the energy to be kept uh, in the string and um, what has to happen is that the strings vibrations those harmonics they're, they're turned into electrical signals in the wires wrapped around these magnets they're called the pickups they pick up the strings vibration so for each of those harmonic patterns there's a nice curvy sine wave signal induced in the wires wrapped around these magnets. Trouble with those signals is that they're very weak. What has to happen is they're sent to an amplifier, which uses an alternating current from the mains, turns it into direct current, AC-DC, uh, and uses that current to boost these incredibly weak signals. And the trouble with that 
is that they're very fragile. Very difficult to boost their power, boost their depth, if you like, and still keep that nice sine wavy shape. <coughs> Guitarists in the 1960s started turning the volume up past the fidelity limits of the amplifier. And that started squashing the top of the sine waves, made them look more like square waves. And you know what? The squashed waves sounded cool. That squashed top gave each harmonic harmonics of its own. caused a huge, rich cascade of frequencies. That cascade of harmonics turned the simplest riff into something powerful. You could get great results without necessarily requiring great expertise. Yeah, thanks very much. Thank you.